which is reading filling up line. Okay. Today, if you had a look at like uh, the schedule and also the post I just sent on Telegram, today we are covering two topics. The first one is reading fill in the blanks, and then also we will cover reading and writing fill in the blanks as well. Okay. So let's get started with our first topic. All right. Now, firstly, I will show you guys where exactly you will get this topic, like where exactly you will get reading fill in the blanks. Okay. I will briefly talk about how many marks it gives you, what is the nature of it. And then, of course, we will get into the details of it as well, as in what you have to or don't have to do over here in your reading FAQ. Okay. So, with that, let's get started. Now, if you have a look over here, Reading fill in the blanks is a part of your, of course, reading section. Okay. And you can find it over here. This is, you can say, more or less your task number four in here. Okay. And it contributes where? It contributes towards your reading. Okay. Now tell me one thing. Do you think you guys will get the topics in the same sequence, like in exactly the same way? as it is listed over here, or do you think it can be different? What do you think? For reading fill in the blanks, and for the other topics of reading section, you think you will get the topics in the same sequence, or do you think it can be different? Can be different. Yes. Okay. Remember, for just for reading section, it can be different, okay? Or it can be exactly the same as well. So you should know the nature of each and every topic, okay? Now, reading FIB. It gives you marks just for reading. And how many marks it gives you? You can say roughly 16%, okay? So 16% of 90, uh, like, you can say around 13, 14 marks, or at times if you have more questions, it can be more than that as well, okay? The other topic we are doing today is a reading and writing fill in the blanks, uh, which is actually more important than this one, okay? Now, let's have a look at the nature of this question, as in what you actually have to do over here, okay? Pay attention to this slide. And if you want, you can take a picture of it as well. This is how your reading fill in the blanks will look like in real example. Okay. That you will have a passage more or less like this one that has blanks at some specific points in here. Okay. And below the passage, you have actually a list of words available. Now, what you have to do is you have to recognize the answer for each blank and how to do that, that I will discuss in detail later. And what you do is, let's just say you identified confident as the answer for your first blank. Now, what will you do? You will click on this word and you will drag and drop it onto this blank position. Okay, so this is how you can say you select your answers in here. Okay, you select your answers by basically dragging and dropping words. Okay, that is why you can say another name for this topic is fill in the blanks, drag and drop. Okay, so whenever someone says to you about fill in the blanks, drag and drop, or reading fill in the blanks, it is like, you know, referring to the same topic. Remember that. Okay, now number of questions can be four or it can be five and one question can have three or it can have four blanks. Okay, if you figure out the answer for one blank correctly, it gives you one mark towards your reading. Okay, now a very important thing in here about the time that I will explain just in a minute. But before that, guys, any questions so far regarding the things I just discussed? 
any questions regarding the nature of the topic or the things that I discussed, it was not clear. Please ask. Any questions, guys? Harzan, Kitsana, Praboda, Sajiman, any questions, guys? No. Okay, now about the time. Now, very important thing about the time. And remember that, keep it in your mind. Or if you want, you can write it down. When it comes to, you can say time in your reading section. So what happens is, if you have a look over here, in your second column, time allowed, you get an overall time actually. Anywhere between 32 and 41 minutes. And it's up to you how much time you give to each and every topic over here. Because you have an overall time for complete section, not for each question of each individual task. Okay. Now, what you have to keep in mind is that reading FIB is one of the important topics here. So give, I would say, at least two to three minutes per question. Okay. How much time? I would say at least two to three minutes per question, no more than three minutes. Okay. All right, guys. So these were the basics of it. Okay. Now remember, you have to choose your answers by dragging and dropping words. Okay. And that I will show you in detail later on as well. And also, these are the number of questions and number of blanks per question that you can have. Okay. And also remember about the time that it's up to you how much time you give to each and every question over there. So manage your time properly. Okay. Now, let's move on to the main things. As in, what are the skills? What are the things that help you to solve your reading philanthropy? Okay, have a look over here. What does it say? Grammar, vocabulary, and collocations. Okay, if you see over here, you will find there are three stars with grammar, two stars with vocabulary, and just one star with collocation. This is actually showing you order or level of importance. So you can say grammar will help us solve maximum number of blanks in our reading FIB. Okay, then will come vocabulary and then it will be collocations. Okay, so in our today's discussion, I will actually uh, touch, of course, uh, like when we are discussing reading FIB, I will like tell you about collocations and also about vocabulary but we will have a detailed discussion on grammar. And then when we will get to reading and writing fill in the blanks, then we will also discuss about collocations in detail by doing some questions and by doing some exercises. Okay, now let's have a look at vocabulary first. Before I actually discuss it in detail, can anyone tell me what does vocabulary mean in general? And what do you think vocabulary can mean over here in your reading pen in the blanks? Anyone? Anyone who can tell me what does actually vocabulary means in general? Uh, a lot of you, sorry? Usage of the words. Like different words. Like we can't use one word frequently. So we can use just normal. Ah, yes, more or less you can say. Okay. So, uh, a more appropriate definition would be, uh, can you come over here? That would be actually easier for me as well. You can come like in this one. Yeah. And it would be easier for you as well. Okay. So, vocabulary, like let's just say I am, uh, like if I'm defining it, so I would actually say something as, you can say knowing the range of words for one particular meaning. Okay. That would like, you know, imply having a good vocabulary. 
okay but when i'm talking about let's just say a uh, blank based on vocabulary so what does that mean actually it means that you have a look at what is the information that is being discussed in that question you have a look at the meaning of words available okay and then you choose a particular word as your answer okay so another way of putting it would be that a blank based on vocabulary basically means that answers that are purely based on meaning basically okay now it might not be clear to some people who are online so let me give you guys a very simple example you think is the answer for this plan this says if they wish to induce buyers buyers as in like you know who are buying any particular thing to take more of a commodity than they are already doing must dash its price and these are your words available what do you think is the answer over here like means like increase no no read it properly and read the line before it as well anyone from the students who are online what do you think is the answer reduce okay. okay your answer here is reduce now why reduce okay because have a look at the line and also if like you know you want to read the line before it when you want buyers to take more of a thing when they will prefer to buy more when the price is less okay and the appropriate word in here that fits in with this sentence is of course reduce okay now there is some like you know grammar in here but you can say more it was based on the meaning of course okay that is like what you can say means on a very basic level like a blank based on vocabulary basically okay now let's go back to our previous slide that we were discussing so guys this is what you can say vocabulary or like a blank based on vocabulary means over here for your reading fyb this is just to give you like a basic understanding later on of course we will do uh, practice questions together and there we will see more complicated examples of of course blanks based on vocabulary okay now telling you guys about collocations now have a look over here what does it say this is saying that collocations are what collocations are group of words as in like two or more words that are used together or you can say used with each other to give a particular meaning okay and you have some examples listed over here now let's actually make some sentences out of these now the very first one make a living can anyone tell me what is the meaning of this collocation uh your jobs like this job mm -hmm. yeah you are right but what would it mean harsan what were you saying basically what what do you do ah uh, yes okay or more specifically like you can say uh, anything you do or any job you do that helps you to earn some money okay mm -hmm. so you could make a living as in like you can support yourself basically okay you can pay your expenses and all so you can make it as like you know a simple sentence as let's just say as a janitor okay now this these were like you can say basically these three words that were giving me this particular meaning okay now can it work in some other way like let's just say 
that if I try to make a sentence, and now I say he was able to take a living. Would this one you think give the same meaning? What do you guys think? The people who are online, like take a living, would it give the same meaning? Think about it. It won't actually. Okay, because you can say these are not like three words that will go with each other to give this. One. Okay, now let's try to make it a bit different. Can it work like this? He was able to earn a living as a janitor. What do you think? Okay, you think it can? What do the people from online class think? Can earn a living work as a collocation for the same meaning? No, it can actually. Okay, remember this, make a living, earn a living, both of them are collocations for the same meaning actually. Okay, remember they can work, both of them can work. All right, similarly, you have some other examples in here, like live happily, practice medicine, academic achievement, cup of tea, surge of anger. All of them are like you can say examples of two, three words that will go with each other. Okay, now if I talk about cup of tea, do you guys think it's in literal sense over here? In literal sense as in like a cup of tea or do you think it means something different? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me write two sentences and you guys can tell me which one is correct or if both are correct mm. what do you guys think which one is correct or both are correct good okay now, the first one, when I'm just saying cup of tea, I mean in the literal sense as in like cup of tea, okay? But in the second one, when I'm saying cup of tea, I'm actually using it as an idiom. That like, you know, means basically uh, to like say uh, something you're not good at or something you don't want to do, okay? Remember that. Okay, guys. So this is what actually collocations mean on a very basic level as in like two or more words that go with each other to you can say give a particular meaning, okay? Now let's do a couple of other examples as well and then we will move on to grammar. So let me write something here. Okay, which one is correct? He was good at making friends or he was good at getting friends? Making friends. Good. Okay, making friends is, you can say, appropriate. Getting friends, not a good occasion. Okay. Similarly, let's just say if I write something as... What do you think? Blonde hair or yellow hair? It is actually blonde hair. Okay. Yellow, you can say, is not a good or is not an appropriate word to use with hair, basically. Okay. Now, let's take a last couple of examples as well. What do you guys think? Let me have a quick shower or let me have a fast shower. Yeah. 
sorry, quick shower or fast shower? Quick. quick. Okay. Fast is not appropriate to use with the word shower. It is quick shower. Okay. So guys, this is what actually you can say collocations are. All right. They are, you can say any two words or more than two, as in like it can be three, at times it can be four, that will be used with each other for a particular meaning. Okay, and you can say for that particular meaning, it would be just two or just like you can say those three words that will be uh, giving you that particular meaning. Okay, as in like in the first example, you saw that making friends could give this meaning. But if I say getting friends, it can't give me the same meaning. That's the thing. Okay, now for reading FIB, as I showed you in this slide, collocations are not that important. Uh, like not a lot of your blanks would be based on collocations but the next topic we are doing today reading and writing fill in the blanks over there a lot of your blanks would be based on collocations okay so over there like uh, i will show you uh, some exercises we will do some exercises together and also i will actually show you a lot more complicated examples of collocations as well okay now we will start our discussion about grammar these are the main grammatical rules we will discuss today and uh, i will try to explain you mostly with examples so you understand the rules and all but before that any questions guys anything that was not clear any questions any confusions ashara harzan kitsanath praboda any questions guys What's that the suffix is? Uh, um, I'll explain you. Don't worry. We'll go through each and every one of these. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's start off our discussion for grammar now. Okay, guys, so the, you can say first grammatical rule and uh, a lot of you, I think, would already know about this. The order of a basic positive sentence is you get your subject, verb, and then object. But what are these three things actually? Let's see with an example. Let's just say if I have a very simple sentence saying John loves Mary. Okay. Now, what is my subject in here? My subject will be John. Loves will be my verb. And Mary will be what? My object, actually. Okay. Now, what are actually these three things? You can say subject is any person, animal, or thing who is either doing something okay or somehow the main focus of a sentence okay that will be your subject and for a basic positive sentence it will be your very first word there okay now the second word being verb for verb i believe a lot of you would know about it verb is basically on a basic level you can say any word that tells you about any sort of action Okay, and object for object, I will say, remember one thing for most of your sentences, whatever you have after verb will be your object. Okay, but if you want to know the definition of object, it is defined more or less as you can say any person or thing affected by the action of subject. Okay, that will be your object. Now, this was a very simple example, but if I have a look at a longer one, in this case, it says they were driving their car to Bangkok. Okay. Now, in here, they is my subject. Okay. Driving will be my verb. And whatever I have after it 
So that is my object over here. Okay. Now, so the rule here is basically subject plus verb plus object. Okay. Now, I'm telling you this thing over here because a lot of you might have this in your mind that uh, this is like a very basic, very simple rule. How it will help me in my reading if I do. Okay. So the way it will help you is let's just say I got a sentence like a basic positive sentence and I am missing actually a verb in there. So if you know this rule, you will say, okay, my subject is there and object is there as well. I am missing a verb. I have to look for a verb. Then you will identify the appropriate word from the list of words available. Okay. And at times this can happen as well that maybe in your list of words, you have just one verb. So of course that one verb will be your answer. Then. Okay. Now moving on to the second row. This says that every sentence must have a subject and a verb and object is optional. This says that not an imperative sentence may have a verb only, but the subject is understood. Now, what does that mean basically? Firstly, let's have a look at its first part that every sentence must have a subject and a verb. What this means is subject verb, I already told you what that is. In this case, I have just my subject and just my verb, no object, okay? Still, I can actually call it as a sentence, okay? So remember this thing as in like the same rule as I told you earlier, this thing applies as well. Subject plus verb, okay? And imperative sentence not necessarily important in the context of reading FIB, but imperative sentences are actually, you can say, when you are asking or ordering someone to do something, okay? And at times it can be just one word. Stop, which is a verb, but in this case, subject is understood as in like, I'm asking you to stop basically, okay? All right, now any question regarding these two rules so far? Any questions, anything that was not clear? These are quite simple rules. I believe a lot of you would already know, but still any questions? Any questions, guys? Anything that was not clear? Okay, if no questions, then we'll move on to the next rule. Next rule also very simple, but uh, a lot of times students confuse this. This says that subject and verb must agree in number. What does that mean? It means that if you have one, or you can say singular subject, you will need a plural verb. Plural verb as in verb will be accompanied with S or ES. Whereas if you have plural subject, as in like more than one subject, or maybe like a subject in plural form, as in like maybe people or any group of individuals there, for that you will use a singular verb, like a verb without S or ES over there. Okay, now let's have a look at some examples. Have a look at this. What does it say? John works in London. Okay. Now, if you see what is my subject here? John. Okay. Now, is it singular or is it plural? Singular. It is one person. Okay. That is why I used works, which is, of course, plural. Okay. With an S, so plural. Similarly, in the next one, when I'm saying mock, it's one singular subject will be accompanied with a plural verb. All right. But let's just say if I now make my subject plural, verb will be singular. Okay. So John and Mary, that's plural subject. So verb will become singular now. Okay. And the same thing applies like, let's just say, if I've got people as my subject, so verb will be singular then. 
okay remember this rule this is also like you know uh, comes in quite handy at times for both your reading fib and also reading and writing fill in the blanks okay all right guys now any questions so far anything that was not clear okay. meaning uh, the verb must be used adding as if plural right and the uh, noun should be a uh, Uh, now should be add s if um, that's correct hello Harrison, i didn't get you buddy can you please repeat your question i mean the if you are using noun you must add s if one if a uh, singular I mean, singular or uh, one person, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you are using verb, mm -hmm. I mean, verb. Okay. Look, mm -hmm. words like you know, work, eats, and all of these, they are your work. Okay. So, according to the subject, you have to see would they come in singular or would they come in plural, basically. If the subject is singular, no, right. use, but if that is plural, you will use like you know singular form of things. Mm, okay, okay, understood. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's move on to the next. Yeah. Now, what does this says? When two singular subjects are connected by or, use a singular verb. Okay, now this is actually talking about some particular group of words. Uh, let me write them here for you guys so it's easier for you to understand. Okay, now it should be easier for you to grasp this concept. So, you know, we have uh, words like is, has, was, or are, were, have. They are also a category of verb known as auxiliary verbs that I will discuss later. Okay, now remember this, that let's just say if we got two singular subjects. Okay, if we got two singular subjects, of course, that like became plural now more than one okay and if anyone know how actually these words work with plural we use words like are were have okay but let's just say if these two subjects were connected by or then what we will do we will use singular form of these words like we will use is has or was if two were connected by or or if they were connected by words like either or or neither. Now, what can be examples? Have a look over here. What does this say? John or Mary is coming tonight, not are. Okay. Similarly, if I say either coffee or tea, this will be is fine now, not are fine. The same goes for neither nor. Neither John nor Mary was late. Remember that. Okay. All right. Now talking about the next rule. This one says that the word it's and it's are two different ones. Now, what is the difference? Let's just say if I take this example, what does it say? The dog has hurt its leg. Okay. This is ITS. What do you think it's is referring to in here? It's. Yes, okay. So this is referring to dog actually, okay. So I can actually call it something known as pronoun 
in which actually what happens the words replace nouns okay nouns as in like you know different names like if i'm just saying dog boy girl that's also a noun or if i'm saying the names of like particular individuals or maybe a particular animal that's also a noun and the words that can replace nouns you term them as pronouns basically okay so it is a pronoun over here but let's just say if i give you something as he says it's 2 o'clock what is it's doing now is it a pronoun again or do you think something else he says it's 2 o'clock Uh-huh. Okay. It's not a pronoun anymore now. Okay. Because when I'm saying he says it's 2 o'clock, so it is not actually replacing any noun. Okay. It is just you can say being used to state a fact that the time now is 2 o'clock. That's it. Okay. Remember that. Whereas in the other one that was a pronoun because that was of course replacing that. Okay. All right, guys. Now, any questions so far? Please ask, uh, because the next rules we are gonna be discussing are referring to parts of speech mainly, and those rules are quite important. So, before that, like at this point, if any questions you guys have, please ask, and I will explain them. Uh, yeah. Uh, meaning of both. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, like it's and it's. No, uh, the meanings are a bit different, okay? Because when you say like, you know, the dog has hurt, let's just say its leg, okay? So its mean actually dog, all right? That is like, you know, replacing, uh, you can say dog, or at times it can be used to replace names of other things as well. That's the thing, okay? Whereas in the second case, when I'm saying it's two o'clock, okay? So that is just like, you know, being used to state a general fact. That's it. Okay, the same goes for actually just the word it as well. Okay, like um, you can say if I'm giving you just a sentence saying it takes time to master difficult concepts. Okay, it takes time to master difficult concepts. Now, do you think it is replacing any now in this example? No. Okay, it is just being used to state a general fact. So it and also its can be used in this sense. Okay, but of course, in certain cases, it can replace like, you know, nouns as well. That's it. Okay. All right, guys. Any questions? Any other confusions? Okay. If no questions, then let's start off with parts of speech rules. The first rule very simple but very important what does it say adjectives qualify or tell us more about nouns all right now i just actually told you guys what nouns are can anyone tell me nouns what are nouns guys i just explained you like two minutes ago Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah not describe necessarily you can say they are just names okay you can say they're just names of uh, person places or at times different things okay now what do adjectives do adjectives actually describe or you can say tell you more about your nouns okay and a very important concept here is adjectives come before a noun in your particular sentence in most of the cases with some exceptions of course that i will discuss as well okay now what does that mean let's have a look over here what does this sentence says i have a big dog okay now what is the noun over here good 
okay noun is of course dog now what is the adjective good okay big is my adjective over here that is qualifying my noun now if you see adjective is coming first and then you have your respective noun okay now and the next one what does this says her husband is rich okay now what is the noun over here now good and what is the adjective good okay but if you see are they coming together now no okay rather adjective actually is the last word of your sentence why is that because they separated they got separated by a verb in here which is is okay so as i told you guys earlier is has was are were have they are also categories of verb known as auxiliary verbs okay i will give you a bit more explanation of it later on but just you can say for the time being remember they are also a type of verb okay so that is why rich like my adjective was the last word of my sentence okay all right now moving on to the next question oh, sorry next rule also an important one this one is about adverbs so adverbs can do what they can qualify your verbs and when they will in a sentence they can either come before after a verb or for some it can be the last word as well like they come in quite a few different ways you can say okay now let's have a look at a simple example okay what does this says yes okay she danced gracefully now can anyone tell me firstly what my verb is in here dance okay dance is my verb so can i say gracefully as my adverb then because when i am saying danced gracefully gracefully you can say it's telling me more about her dancing okay you can say it's describing her dancing okay that's why i will call it my adverb and if you see this is coming after my verb okay now the next one he slowly moved the newspaper what's the verb now move good okay verb is moved now okay so what will be adverb of course slowly moved okay so slowly would be my adverb and now if you notice adverb is not coming after rather it is coming actually before your respective verb that's the thing okay now giving you the example of last kind like the last word of sentence that would be something as he read the instructions carefully okay so in this case if you see my adverb is the last word of my sentence in here okay because when i'm saying read this is my verb and then carefully of course being my adverb is the last word in here okay all right guys any questions regarding this rule or the rule we discussed earlier please ask if not we will move on to the next ones okay so adjectives basically describe or tell you more about now okay like as in some of the simple examples we discussed i have a big dog so dog was not a verb that was a noun okay so big was of course my adjective there similarly another simple example can be let's just say beautiful house okay so house is noun beautiful is adjective okay but adverb it does what it now tells you more about the verb actually okay like as in let's just say if i write as she danced gracefully okay so danced you know my verb and when i'm saying gracefully 
gracefully is not telling me anything about her is telling me about her dancing okay which is my verb so that's why gracefully at verb so that's the major difference okay all right now the next rule adverbs can also qualify adjectives and when they will they can come before my adjective okay so what it actually means is have a look at this example and pay more attention to the last three words that i am highlighting tell me out of these three words firstly what's my noun dessert good okay dessert is my noun dessert like you know as in you can say any sort of sweet dish all right like a cake chocolate whatever that is that's what you call like you know dessert now when i'm saying delicious dessert can i call this adjective delicious Adverb. yes okay delicious would be adjective because that is qualifying noun but when i say exceptionally delicious dessert this is now adverb because this is even further qualifying my adjective okay to the people who might be a bit confused over here so let's just say i'm saying dessert okay that is just a noun all right that is just a noun like any sort of dessert that might be when i'm saying delicious dessert now i have more information for the dessert that it is delicious very tasty okay so delicious is adjective now but when i'm saying exceptionally delicious okay so now this is telling me that is it is not just delicious it is very like exceptionally delicious so this is qualifying then my adjective now not the noun all right so that's a simple example of how adverbs can tell you more about the adjectives that's the thing okay and they will always come before your adjective remember that okay and you have an other example here as well okay all these rules that i'm telling you i will show you at the end in one slide as well you guys can take a picture of it or at that time you can write all of them down and uh, i will actually write all of these rules when we will be practicing questions as well wherever we come across any of the rules i will show you over there as well okay now let's move on to the rule number 9 now what does this say adverbs can qualify a complete sentence okay and when they will adverb will go where it will come at the very beginning of that sentence okay now what does that mean actually let's have a look at a couple of sentences if i have a look at the second one what does it say fortunately we got there in time okay fortunately we got there in time now if you guys pay a bit of attention and if you read the sentence you will agree with me that the word fortunately is adding a bit of extra meaning to your sentence okay as in like if i just say we got there in time okay and i say fortunately we got there in time so fortunately is adding some extra info as in like maybe they avoided something bad or maybe they reached somewhere just in time like you know that they were able to maybe make it to their interview maybe their flight or something it is implying some extra information okay so this thing uh, like you know adverb will come at the very beginning then. okay all right now another rule over here and quite an important one this says that preposition can join your verb and noun in a sentence okay and the way it will work is preposition will come after your verb and before your noun in a particular sentence now what does that mean let's have a look consider this example what does it say he went into the 
shop okay he went into the shop now in this case into is my of course preposition okay uh, by the way let me write actually some prepositions in here for you guys so you like you know have some examples in your mind as well Bye, bye. Bye. Yeah, that you can also say. All right. So these are some simple examples of prepositions, and what they usually do is they join your verb with the noun. Okay. As in, if you see in this example, into is joining went with actually the shop. So went is what? This is your verb. and the shop is your noun actually it's a noun phrase but for the sake of simplicity in here we can consider it as noun okay similarly if let's just say i write she fell off the horse so off is my preposition which is joining verb with the noun okay remember that now the rule i will actually write down here and another very important thing you guys need to know all right so this is the rule verb plus preposition plus noun okay but this like overall whole thing you will have in very like you can say simple in very easy sentences in most of the cases you will come across one portion of it one portion as in you might get verb plus preposition or you might get preposition plus noun okay you will come across one portion of it all right so keep it in your mind because both of them are quite important okay all right guys now any questions any confusions regarding these rules please ask uh, some more rules i have to explain you as well i'll show you in a minute any questions guys anything that is not clear please ask all right if no questions then let's have a look at some other very simple rules uh the first one being about conjunctions uh what are conjunctions they are your words like these ones okay and they can do what they can join two nouns any two parts of speech parts of a sentence or at times two complete sentences as well okay now an interesting thing about conjunction and is that uh, you guys should know is it joins similar natured words as in like you can say words belonging to similar parts of speech okay so let's just say if i got a noun after and i'll put a noun here as well okay if i got a verb after and i'll put a verb here as well similarly if i got a verb in ing form i will put a verb in ing form here as well remember that this is quite a simple rule and can help you quite a few times okay all right guys now moving on to the next step. forms of verb okay tell me this with has have or had 
which form of verb will I use over here? Good. Okay. With has, have, or had, you will always use third form. Remember this, guys. Okay. What about has been, have been, or had been? Okay, so let's like you know, write it verb in ing form basically. Okay, what else? Okay, remember? Uh, no, no, not second, third. Okay, yeah, either verb in ing or third form, both are correct. Okay, either third form or verb in ing. Both are correct. Okay. Now let me write a couple of examples in here to explain you this concept. Okay, so if you have a look, in the first example, I wrote the work has been finished. Okay, by the way, if anyone knows active voice, passive voice, so this in here, I will term it as passive voice actually. Okay, if I actually write, let's just say, by him at the end of it, this will become passive voice term. okay now when like you can say it refers to any action or anything that like is completed finished or done in that case you will use third form of it. but when you are referring to an action something that is going on something that is continuing then you will use verb in ing form remember that okay sorry I guess. So what I said was, when it refers to an action that is completed, done, okay, then with has been, you will, of course, go with third form, okay? But when I'm referring to an action that has been going on, continuing, and also most of the times, it will actually refer to maybe a duration as well, then you will use verb in ing, okay? Moving on to the uh, one of the last things and quite simple ones about noun phrases. Okay, now what are noun phrases? The first one we have already covered, adjective plus noun. And other rule and also quite simple one is articles accompanied with nouns. Okay, now what are articles? Articles are your characters like a and the okay and they can be accompanied with now okay like for example let's just say if i write a car and with an i believe a lot of you would know and you use with vowels a e i o u okay and Article D can also be used with nouns. Okay. Can anyone tell me what is the difference between the use of article A and the article the? Yes, good. Okay. So article A you can say can be used with any noun, or more specifically, you can say common noun. But with article the, you're referring to something specific. Okay, so you can say da is used mainly with proper nouns. Okay, uh, last couple of things in here. Present participle is what? It is your verb in ing form. And can be used with noun. Okay, for example, growing popularity. 
okay now past participle and this last one is not that common uh, past participle is third form of verb and can be accompanied with your respective noun okay so an example of it would be swallow okay all right guys go through these noun phrases and if any questions any confusions please ask any questions guys all right now here in in this slide you have all the rules that we have discussed okay either take a picture of it write them down up to you guys go through these and then i will talk briefly about suffixes and then we will start doing some questions Okay, guys. Now, moving on to the last rule for today, which is about suffixes. That I believe, Hasan, you were asking earlier. So, suffixes are what? Suffixes are actually you can say some characters that come at the end of a word. And what do they tell you? They tell you about which particular part of speech uh, those words belong to. Okay. because look if i go back to these rules let's just say if i take like you know this rule adjective plus noun okay in order to know if a word is noun or if a word is you can say an adjective most of the cases you have to know their meaning okay but what to do if you don't know their meaning then suffixes will help you okay as it says over here as well when you can't figure out by the meaning of words then use suffixes to figure out which part of speech they belong to okay for example if you have a look over here i o n is what it's a noun suffix okay so any word that will have i o n at the end population reflection domestication they would be nouns okay similarly i b l e is an adjective suffix okay so words like terrible horrible they would be your respective adjectives okay now ly a very common adverbial suffix so words like quickly swiftly you will term them as your adverbs okay all right guys uh, that is pretty much all the rules now if you have any questions please ask if not we will start practicing now. any questions anything that was not clear please ask all right so let's have a look at some questions now
Just give me one minute, guys. Okay, guys, have a look at this question. I have written the rules with each blank and also the word, the like uh, part of speech you're looking for. I have highlighted that in the red. I'm also highlighting some uh, hints for you. Have a look at this question. I'm giving you two minutes and then we will have a look at it together. go through this you have two minutes Okay, guys, let's have a look at this question. So what does it say? From the first dash catalog of medicinal plants. So you're looking for an adjective. What do you think will come here? These are your words. Anyone? First, illustrated. Illustrated, good. Okay, now why illustrated? You are right, but why is illustrated my answer? Because of illustrations in the next chapter and the next page. Good. Okay. And also and, the context. Yes. All right. And also another thing you got to keep in mind and you've got to think like, you know, a bit logically as well, that as I said, you're looking for an adjective. 
okay if i have a look at the uh, words i have two adjectives illustrated and the other one is provided okay if i say provided catalog i don't know who provided that catalog that information is not there mm. but illustrated catalog that makes sense why because catalog is usually you can say a booklet a small book containing pictures along with descriptions and you call those descriptions as illustrations that's why okay now the next one this says with the growing dash of copper plate engravings what will come in here um popularity yes okay that like i gave you i think examples as well growing popularity good okay next one with the emergence of dash looking for a noun i did give you a hint as well scientist okay firstly nadu da vinci a scientist if anyone knows uh artist yes. artist yeah it's not uh, uh... Yes, he was a very famous artist. Okay, this one. Okay, look. That after that they are talking about actually nationalists, like over there as well. Like according to them, nature can be depicted in a bit of a different. Way. But immediately after it, what they are talking about and the individuals they are referring to, they are artists. That's it. Okay. Now, last line. Their likeness dash onto paper or vellum. What will come in here? You're looking for mm. a. Provided. So. Uh, okay, read this sentence. Likeness provided onto paper or vellum. Does it sound appropriate? Likeness. tendency no it's actually rendered rendered yeah. oh what does it mean? okay so firstly we were looking for a verb now we had two verbs one rendered the other one provided okay we went with rendered why other Because... i mean synonyms uh, so Uh, Harzan, your voice cut off there. What did you say? Sorry. Okay. So in here, you know, uh, when I'm saying on to paper or vellum, paper, you guys know what it is. And when it is saying or, you can establish a bit of a relation that something like paper. Okay. Because vellum is, uh, you can say, leather-like material that was used as paper in ancient, in old times. Okay. now likeness can you guess what it can mean like likeness yeah likeness and rendered rendered means refer to the object likeness you can say quality of two or more things being similar to each other okay so in this sense what it actually means is that they wrote it down their likeness on to paper or pen Okay, like written down, uh, like you know, taking a note of something. This is what rendered means over here. Okay, now, right. now moving on to the next question. Uh, this is an easy one. Uh, let's do this one. Okay. Now go through this. Keep the rules in front of you as well. Uh, this is also an easy one, not very difficult.
Okay, guys. Blank one. This dashed at the writing you produce. What do you think? Good. Okay. This means that the writing you produce. Because like, you know, in the first line that I highlighted, yes. Okay. They are talking, they are introducing academic writing. In the second line, they are explaining a bit more. So you use words like means, defines to further tell about something. Okay. Now the next one. You produce is a dash of your intellectual abilities. So it's an article A. You're looking for A now. What do you think? Reflection. Good. Okay. Now in this one, you have got a preposition. It is before that. So you're looking for a verb in here. What will come? It will be puts. Because if I say it detects into words, that like, you know, is not appropriate. But if I say it puts, as in like it arranges them in the proper way, that makes sense. All right, now let's move on to the next questions. Yeah, let's have a look at this one. Yeah, go through it. This is not a difficult one. Okay, guys, let's have a look at it together now. For indigenous Australians, with many studies showing that improved dash and socioeconomic status are directly dashed to educational participation. Now, for the first plan, what do you think should come here? Good. Okay. Now, why health and why not wealth? Yes. Yes. Wealth and socioeconomic status, more or less, they mean the same thing. Okay. So if I say improved wealth, and that will be incorrect. Okay. Now this blank should be easy. Directly dash to. Good. Okay. Directly is your adverb. You are looking for an appropriate verb in here. Okay. This one, a range of issues, dash participation in education. Affecting. Good. Okay. Affecting participation. Because uh, if you guys remember that noun phrase rule, verb in ing plus noun. Okay. So participation is a noun. So verb in ing affecting. That is, of course, your, you can say, uh, appropriate verb in here. Okay. Now, including dash to educational institutions. Good. Well, okay. access. Yes, it would be including access. Including access.
Okay. All right. So now let's move on to some next questions. Okay, let's do this. This is a little bit difficult one. Go through this and then we'll have a look at it together. Okay, guys, let's have a look at it. What does it say? The American cabinet, unlike the British, has no connection with the legislature and this lack of dash between executive and legislature. What do you think should come here? Good. Okay. This lack of... Lack what? of regulative. No, it will be coordination. Okay. Why? Because it is after of... I'm looking oh, for an yeah. coordination. So, and also if you between these okay. coordination. Now, one of the dash features. Think about it. One of the dash features of American federal government. You're looking for an adjective here. That I will tell you. Good. Okay. You're looking for the adjective, and this is your appropriate adjective up here. Distinctive features. Okay. Now, next one. It came as a dash against George III's very intimate relations. It came as a dash. What do you think? Also, do Pay attention to this word. May give you a bit of an idea. Good. Okay. Now it is Article A. Looking for a noun. Okay. It could be feedback. It could be reaction. But since it says against. Okay. That should give you a bit of an idea that it will be reaction. All right, last one. A bit tricky. Read this line properly. What does this say? The constitution guarded against executive control through placement, okay? by dash federal officials through placement like you know as in you can say the name of a rule or something now they protected against executive control using placement by doing what to federal officials what do you think regulative no no because regulative is an adjective 
And if you say buy in this case, it won't be appropriate. Disobey. Disobeying. Okay, read this line by disobeying federal officials. Okay, I will tell you this. It's one of these two. Good. Okay. So it is actually disqualified. Okay. Because it is saying guarded against executive control. Okay. So if you have a look at the meaning of it, and if you're saying just like, you know, disobeying because they didn't like, you know, obey them or what they were saying, that's not appropriate. But if you say they're guarded against executive control, okay, by disqualifying them, okay, as in like you can say by eliminating them from their particular positions, that's appropriate. Okay. All right. Now let's have a look at some other questions. Yeah, let's have a look at this one. Okay, go through this one. Okay, guys. So, what does it say? University of Maryland, who 78 academic programs, dash in the top 25. What do you think? It is before in, before preposition. So, before preposition, if you remember, comes verb. So, what do you think? Provided. Okay, read this one. You have two verbs. Provided and rent. Okay. Have a look at it and see which one you think would be more appropriate. Read the complete sentence. Good. Okay. It is actually rack. All right, next one. By drawing, uh, by drawing top notch faculty, attracting the brightest students, and dash in the quality of our academic programs. Now remember, you have and in here. Okay. And remember, after and, this is actually a first word you are looking for. And I also highlighted attracting in here. Because both of these, like attracting the brightest students, and dash in the quality of our academic programs, they are phrases, but they are joined by and. So the phrase before it might give you an idea of which word will come in here, okay? So have a look at it, the highlights that I gave you, and then tell me what do you think would be the answer? Okay. According to grammar, inquiring is okay. But put inquiring and then read that sentence. Does it make sense? Investing. Good. Okay. It will be investing. And then the last one. We are a force to reckon with on a national dash. Mm 
basis. Good. Okay, national basis. This is like a bit of a collocation as well, you can see. All right. Now, yeah, let's have a look at this one last question and then we will do reading and writing fill in the blanks. Okay, guys, let's have a look at this one. What does it say? Researchers already know that long periods of time in a zero gravity dash, such as that inside the International Space Station. So zero gravity dash, what will come in here? Okay, what would, it, would it be atmosphere or would it be environment? Mm -hmm. Also, see what it is actually saying, such as that inside the International Space Station. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, and because okay. atmosphere you consider out in the open, okay, whereas zero gravity environment, you can say any sort of like, you know, place where is no gravity. So that could be inside an international space station. And uh, there are actually, uh, I'm not sure it's here in Australia, but uh, there are some, uh, uh, like you can say, sort of adventure places in USA in which they actually take the plane up and then they take it straight down. And inside the plane, they create a zero gravity environment. Okay, so in which like the people are floating, just like you would do in space. Okay, now the next one results in loss of bone density and dash to the body's muscles. Good. Okay, that would be damage. Now, next one. That's partly why stays aboard the stays as in like you know you can say uh, the time period they are uh, staying at aboard the as in on uh, international space station are dash to six months what do you think will come here bound 
ओके वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टाइम पीरियड अकॉर्डिंग टू लाइक यू कैन से वन ऑप्शन कैन बी बाउंड but see when you are talking about time period and all is there more better more appropriate word it's actually restricted okay because when it comes to time period you mostly use the word restricted bound is more used in the sense as in like you know when you are bound to an area to a particular region in that way okay now next one it says a number of nasa astronauts are reporting that they 20 by 20 vision as in their eyesight dash after spending time in space what do you think okay it's actually deteriorating okay this is you can say we uh, can approach it more in the context of meaning than grammar because like if you see the entire passage has been about like what sort of bad effects uh, uh, occur on human body by spending more time in space okay firstly talked about loss of bone density damage to the muscles now it is talking about vision as in eyesight so the worst that we have available if i say 20 by 20 vision fracture that doesn't make any sense then the only word that's left that can say that their vision was affected is deteriorating that's the thing okay all right guys so these were some reading fib now any questions before we move on to reading and writing fill in the blanks any questions regarding like uh the reading fibs we have discussed anything that was not clear please ask ahmed ah uh, yes can we do the second one please second one yeah sure second question right you mean this one yeah second question yeah we can do this one all right go through this and uh, do pay attention to the highlights and then we'll have a look at it all right so let's have a look at the first one this says that more will be bought if the price is lower <clears throat> like if the price is less people will buy more of a thing and then it says less will be bought if the price is dash right okay less will be bought if the price is raised now a second blank we did earlier <coughs> then it says that uh, due to trade depression sellers will either have to reduce prices or put less on the dash we are looking for a noun but what do you think is the appropriate noun here good okay because you are talking about trade you are talking about sellers who are like you know selling anything so appropriate word would be market okay then it says they will not be able to sell the same dash at the same price good okay they will not be able to sell the same amount at the same price good 
All right. Okay. Does that like uh, address your confusions? Uh, I forgot who actually asked for this question. No, thank you. No worries. Okay, guys. So this was reading FIB. Now let's move on to next topic for today, which is reading and writing FIB. We have already discussed quite a few rules for it in our discussion just now, but some of the things are a bit different. Let's have a look at those as well, and then we'll do some questions for that. All right, so reading and writing fill in the blanks, you will also get in your reading section. Okay, now, if I actually talk about its weightage, as in how many marks it gives you towards your reading, that would be 22%. It's quite important. Okay, now, what is the nature of this topic? As it says, reading and writing fill in the blanks, so also an FIB task, okay? But what you have now is you get a list of words for each blank, okay? Before that, there were words available be uh, below. We dragged and dropped them. But now we have a list of words for each blank. And then I will choose like, you know, the appropriate answer for each blank in here, all right? So, some of the points in here, these two I already told you, you have a list of four words. And by the way, do remember, that's why we can also call it as fill in the blanks drop down. Okay. Now we can have a bit more questions in here. Like we can have five or we can have six questions. And one question has four or five blanks. And one blank is going to give you one mark towards your reading and one mark toward your writing, okay? And when we talk about the time, now you can give actually a little bit more time in here. You can go up to four minutes, okay? Not more than that, uh, yes, per question, okay? But try to like keep it between two and four, like the questions that are a bit easy, making sure you get done with them like, you know, within two, two and a half minutes time, okay? Because as I explained earlier, time is self-managed in the reading section. That's very important. Remember that. Okay. All right. So now if we talk about the weightage of skills, grammar would be least important, but it will help you in some questions. It would be then more of meaning now. And majorly it would be on collocations. Okay. So now it's 12.25. We will do just a couple of collocation exercises and then we will do some reading and writing FIB question. 